Uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm Victor, and uh, today's presentation is going to be trying to convince you to uh, adopt some more um, expressive functional programming techniques. Uh, I'm not going to try to sell you on the FP snake oil, but this is just a, a preview talk. Uh, if you want to see more things, more uh, interesting examples and scenarios, I do have an expanded uh, version tomorrow morning. Uh, on um, It's called the imperatives must go. So now um, I'm going to focus on particular uh, scenarios. Um, it's, and it's called and then some T. So modern C++ has become more functional. Um, we've been adopting old ideas for over 40 years now, some of them, uh, and uh, gradually incorporating them in, in modern C++ uh, from mundane things like closures uh, and, and uh, algebraic data types to um, folding, mapping, partial applications, uh, ranges, lazily evaluated um, ranges, and, and so on, and composition, of course. I was supposed to find that. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about boxes, uh, much more simple things. And what I mean by boxes is ways to uh, encapsulate a value. And there are several ways of encapsulating values in, in C++, just some of them uh, over there, and ways to access that value in the box. Uh, and what we need to uh, have in mind when thinking about uh, working with such values in context is how we pass along computation and how we treat those values. And uh, I'm not going to go into uh, all theoretical concepts and do weird analogies with burritos and other things. Uh, but I, I, I am going to talk about uh, functors and I am going to talk about uh, monads a bit. Uh, I highly recommend um, if you're a visual person uh, and you want to see some really simple explanations uh, in pictures of various kinds of transformations and, and, uh, and how um, uh, various techniques such as uh, functors and monads work. I recommend this source um, that I've linked there. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to show examples, concrete examples. And uh, I'm going to pick on an optional and, and claim that a standard optional can greatly simplify your code. If you if don't look inside the box, you don't try to unwrap it, and if you're not trying to use optional for error handling, uh, like, like I've seen uh, folks do. And in general, when in doubt, uh, look for inspiration from uh, other languages where we borrow these concepts from, uh, like Haskell and Rust, and I'm going to show uh, comparative examples. Uh, but maybe not uh, do what Hasklers do uh, all the time. So when we have a, a chain of operations uh, like this, involving several functions that pass along some uh, wrapped value, try not to look at the value at each stage of the computation. And in, in order to be able to achieve this, we need some kind of magic. We need some kind of higher level functions uh, that hide these transformations uh, from us and, and mask the value and allows, allow us to pass along the value with its context from processing to processing. Uh, very simple example, let's assume we have an operation that could fail to yield a string, we, we could easily try to check if we actually got a string in, with it, inside that optional and then do something with the, the, the value. This is what I mean by unwrapping it. Uh, but this is not the way to go. Uh, one mechanism that we can use is uh, lifting functions, so building higher order functions. Uh, for example, a lifted capitalized that would encapsulate this operation uh, in, 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 a, in a higher order function. Think of it of changing the codomain of the function rather than having a function from string to string, having a function from optional string to optional string. So changing the, the codomain uh, of the operation. And we can do this lifting operation for any function. Um, and one such mechanism is uh, a well-known one, fmap. And uh, we can have uh, a very simple implementation of an fmap-like 
uh, facility, uh, which uh, uses a function from A to B, as we can, we can see there, uh, and takes an optional of A, which is the input, and yields an optional of B. Or if you prefer to stay away from standard function, you can do something uh, like this. So uh, th there are examples in C++ already in, in the standard library. For example, standard transform is an F map like function. This is a higher order function that achieves the same goal. And I, I'm actually using here, for example, to lift a vector operation. So have a transformation from a vector of A's to a vector of B's. So I, I'm lifting a function that would uh, operate uh, from A to B. For example, the length function I have in this uh, toy example, the length function uh, operates from string to int, so it, it works on the, on the lower domain, uh, whereas the lifted function, which I, uh, I obtain using the fmap facility here, will operate from a vector of strings to a vector of integers, for example, calculating the lengths of some strings. So th this would be the, the concept of, of lifting an, uh, an operation. And of course, uh, we immediately ran into uh, the need to chain such operations. And the whole discussion uh, today is about chaining such operations. For example, uh, I might want to trim a string and then calculate its length. So again, let's assume that each such operation, which is trivial in this case, but let's assume each such operation could have a, a, a failure mode or a mode where it would not yield the value. So again, we would talk about lifting the trim and lifting the length of operation and composing them. And right now it doesn't look pretty. Uh, but th the whole point uh, about this journey is we can make it pretty and we have the facilities to make it pretty. And I, I reached one such mechanism, and these are the monadic extensions to standard optional uh, that are in uh, C++23. Ignore the grayed out parts. Um, let's assume we have a, a function that uh, tries to parse uh, an integer out of a string buffer. Uh, th the bits that are important here is that we might have a failure operation. Doesn't matter why and we extract an optional integer out of that string by parsing it. And then if we want to do something with this, if we, we want to chain operations, uh, we have facilities uh, now for optional <coughs> functions like and then transform or else, uh, and we can, we can chain up such operations in a way that makes it look like it's a linear or sequential processing. And all the way without trying to unwrap uh, at each stage to see, I, do I have a value? Okay, do something. I don't have a value? Okay, I'm in on, the, on the unhappy path. So again, uh, ignore the grayed out parts. Uh, the idea is to, to see how the, the, the value is piped into our transformation functions and in our continuation function and the, the unhappy path for or else. And we can chain as, as many of these as, uh, as needed. And this comes from some heritage. And I think it's instructive to understand uh, where these concepts come from and how they're applied in, in other environments. For example, if we think about Rust, uh, we have the option type in Rust uh, and uh, works, works in, a, in a fairly similar way. It, it's defined as an enum uh, in Rust, and you have some when you have the value and none when you don't have a value. So this is uh, in two short examples of uh, having or uh, not getting a value out of there. And of course, uh, uh, the, the original inspiration for both would be uh, in Haskell, where we have a maybe data type, uh, which would be a just, a value, that's the type constructor for a value and nothing where we don't have a value. And again, a very trivial example where we see uh, both uh, situations. So th these are uh, some of the concepts that uh, I've shown in the, in the pictures at the beginning. Uh, for example, uh, 
we've seen transform uh, from standard library, uh, and that is an fmap operation, and it is a functor. Um, not to be confused with function objects, which, which some people call functors, which is wrong. Uh, and we have the continuation uh, monad, uh, and then in C++ in optional and in uh, uh, standard exec, uh, expected, which is a, a bind operation. So in, in, in Haskell, we would identify this kind of contribution as bind, and it also has a nicer syntax to change such operations together, which would, we don't get in C++. So <coughs> we've seen how optional might not hold the value in the context uh, in, in such a chain of operations, but we don't always know why. So uh, sometimes it gives us no information about why we don't have a, a value in that optional. And, and at which point. And if, if we want some contextual information about when, the, uh, when we are in a situation where we don't have a value, we need to use something else. And that something else is uh, standard accepted, uh, expected in C++23, which either has uh, the expected value, T, or some kind of E type, some kind of error type, that has additional information about uh, why we're not, we're not holding a value at a particular point. And that can be anything. And I've rewritten the, the previous example in terms of expected, where now I'm expecting an integer result or a parse error, which par where parser is some type uh, I, um, uh, I invented there. And uh, again, ignore the, the grayed out parts. They're not important. The, the important parts are the unhappy paths where we can add additional information that may come out of some processing or uh, in this case, which is clearly in line, uh, for example, out of range, where I check some uh, range condition for the integer or, uh, for example, when the, the string to interview function didn't yield an integer value where uh, I, I create a parse error where I say not an integer, not the most descriptive reason, but it's an example. And again, if we look uh, comparatively, if we look at uh, Rust, uh, again, it's an enum type result in Rust is either okay or error, uh, which uh, have enum types in Rust have an associated type. Uh, they're much fancier than uh, uh, C++. And um, let's say we have a, a safe division function uh, that yields either an integer or a division by zero. Again, a, a toy example here. Uh, let's assume division by zero is some kind of uh, error uh, type that I, uh, I defined. And I'm using, uh, just uh, as a uh, short explanation for people that are not familiar with the syntax, I'm using uh, pattern matching uh, to match uh, exhaustively either zero, in which case I construct the, the expected type uh, with uh, division by zero because I see the, I'm, I'm matching the, the second argument of the division function, which is the denominator. So if I have a zero denominator, then uh, I have an error of type division by zero and anything else, underscore means anything else, uh, I'm matching it exhaustively there. Then I, I'm in the okay constructor for result, which is the result of the division. Uh, and you see the examples there. Uh, the, this pattern is so pervasive in Rust that we uh, actually have special syntax to chain uh, such uh, continuations in functions. There's a question mark syntax which very nicely uh, avoids the boilerplate of uh, returning early from functions where we have such operations that uh, yield the same result type from a, a function and its uh, colleague. So um, whenever you see a, a question mark like thing after a, a function that returns a result in, in Rust, that just means it just bubbles up the, the, the result, the expected thing or the error uh, to the color function above. So it's such, uh, 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 so pervasive in the APIs of the standard library and in usage as idiomatic usage that you have like 
syntactic sugar to make this uh, boilerplate all go away and don't have to be explicit about matching uh, the result. Uh, Haskell, uh, same thing. Uh, we have the either type, which is <laughs> maybe weirdly named, has two type constructors left and right. Um, and you can, there's usually the convention is that um, uh, right is the right <laughs> answer and left is not, but it's, uh, it's not mandatory. So uh, the same function, safe division, uh, same technique using pattern matching. If uh, a y is zero, then uh, we construct either with the left side, uh, which is the equivalent of R in Rust, and we're using division by zero, another data type defined. And anything else, underscore means the same thing. You see the similarity between Rust and Haskell, that's not accidental. Uh, and everything else, we can start the right part of the either with the result of the division. Um, that those backticks just mean infix notation for calling a function. Um, and the example shows how it works. So it's kind of the same thing. Uh, this is the, just another uh, type. If you think about uh, availability, so standard optional, it's not exactly news. I'm hoping a lot of people are using it. Um, um, GCC 7, Clang 4, uh, MSVC uh, 2017, uh, 4 standard ex uh, expected, GCC 12, Clang 16, uh, and Visual Studio uh, 2022 17.3. And this is uh, C++ 23. Uh, the monadic continuations are a separate thing. Um, so, um, for example, uh, in um, lib standard C++ in GCC, that's uh, version 12. For Clang, version 14. Uh, Visual Studio 17.6. And for expected, the situation uh, <coughs> is not great at the moment. So GCC 13, we still don't have an implementation of oh, in Clang, last time I looked, and Visual Studio 17.6, uh, which is in preview right now, and it's gonna land around May, I believe. Uh, if, it, if you're not on the latest and greatest and you cannot uh, upgrade, there are alternatives. Uh, to this day, I, I believe these are the best implementations, uh, the ones from uh, Cybrand, uh, TL optional and TL expected, those are the links. Uh, there are, these are header only, very easy to, to use, to adopt. Uh, they work on, even in C++ 11, 14. Um, so, and they're drop-in replacements, so you could easily use these if you cannot uh, use the C++ 23, for example, uh, and then switch. And their uh, production quality. Um, Further reading, if you want to uh, read more about this, uh, I can um, uh, recommend this article by my colleague Cy Brand, Functional Exceptionless Error Handling with C++23 Optional ex and Expected. Uh, that's the link on the VC blog. And of course, I can plug my, my other presentation, The Imperatives Must Go, where uh, I explain a bit more in detail uh, some of these concepts and others in, in functional programming. Uh, and uh, just uh, to pay homage to the, the right folks, uh, so this is Phil Wadler, uh, one of the persons who, responsible for adding type classes and monads in, in Haskell. Uh, we, we've had those since the early 90s. Uh, this is Phil now. Uh, and I'm gonna end with uh, this quote from Phil. Uh, make your code readable, pretend the next person who looks at your code is a psychopath and they know where you live. Uh, my friend Ivan uh, likes to use this code as well. So, and then I'm done. <laughs>